Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, morning on this beautiful Monday morning here in September 16th, 2024. I'm glad you guys are with me today. And it's going to be an exciting day today here on this beautiful Monday morning. And I will sort of give it a couple of minutes for people to be able to get on here. And we will go ahead and discuss this, uh, this month's book uh, and talk about that for a little bit. And establishing that so we're gonna wait just a minute for the people to get on board here that we were able to uh, bring out some stuff here let's see I'll wait on people to get on board here all right all right we got some people on board here good I was waiting on everybody to get on board this morning, and I hope everyone's doing great today. I really am. So let's go ahead and get started today. Uh, you know, we've been talking about actually the book of the month for the month of September, and I'll hold it up for you guys. All right. Here it is, this this right here. Power of the Law of Manifestation. I'm excited. This is a good book. All right. Now, many of you have gotten this book uh, for this month already. If you have not, it should be coming to any day now, but I'm sure by now all of you have gotten it. If you have not gotten it, I think it's made available in the next couple of days. You can pre-order it right now. It's a pretty big, thick book. Um, I've got a follow-up to this book coming out very soon here in a couple of months, so you definitely want to be a part of that as well. I'm glad you guys are with me. I really, really am. Um, I tell you, it just uh, uh, did some ministering yesterday uh, at a church and... and uh, flew back and I, it, it was a great great time we had a great meeting so i'm excited actually today to discuss this book because if many of you you're done reading it wow good i'm so glad many of you um who really don't know a lot of the backbone or not backbone the foundation of what my ministry is built on is basically from a biblical point of view law of attraction and once again let me just say this to start off my disclaimer you know law of attraction is just a coined term it's more of a secular term but it doesn't mean it's not valid in the biblical sense because that's where they got it from you can even go back from years ago and read books like The Secret and different things and it's packed full of scripture because of the fact the Bible backs up every so many stories on as a man thinketh in his heart so is he and really knowing how to bring that forth uh, even from Jacob to Laban with the, the cattle who were in heat and they wanted spotted calves I mean they're on and on and on and on and on and today I want to talk to you guys about a certain scripture that we've all heard before but I want you to think about this for a moment because it's very important we begin to dive into and understand a little bit more of biblical economics. When I say biblical economics, I mean like biblical economics in the sense of really pulling in the wealth of the scripture. So biblical economics to me is the wealth of the scripture that is revelational that you guys and we all need. All right. So let's get started with this for a moment. So if we read in Genesis chapter one, verse 26, it says this. Now think about from the very beginning of time, this is what God did. This what got established even with uh, Adam because we think about it, Adam you know created um, God created Adam in the image and likeness of God but why did God create Adam why did God create Adam now it says that God said let us make man in our image us being Elohim this is what death means right here if you can see this I think you probably can't see this that's Elohim on my arm, Elohim. That's where that word comes from in Genesis. Um, and in the Aramaic, it's very, whew, very mystical. It's a very cool word. But it says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the livestock, which is, you know, the cattle and stuff of the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So I want us to think about that for a moment. Why did God create mankind? Let us make man in our image. Why? In our likeness. So they can rule. So they can rule. The understanding here when it deals with Genesis is what is the definition of mankind? What is the definition of why were we were created? We were created because it says, here, here's the deal. God says, hey, I got an idea. Let's make man. Can you imagine, let's say, Jesus and the Holy Spirit saying, well, why? What will man do? What is the definition of man? It's the same procedure as me saying, if I was the creator and I say, I'm going to create a lion. 
okay, what is a lion? What does it do? What does it have on it? Well, I'm going to create it with a, with a mane. I'm going to create it with fur. It's going to be ruler, you know, over the forest. It's going to be our protector. You know, um, animals miles and miles away will understand and know when when it comes near its pride, you know, it'll, it'll the lion will roar and say, back off, right? So in other words, it, it will take up a sphere of influence in its roaring process to guarantee and to basically portray the image of creator or protector or or, or, or um, savior over the territory. Uh, you know, think about those words you can apply over the area because the fact he saves, the lion saves because he protects this his, his territory. So when we say that, we have to understand that if I was to tell you that definition, you'd be like, oh, wow, sounds a little scary. Exactly. Sounds a little bit, I don't want to tread on that on that animal's territory. Exactly. So when you think about God creating man, you have to think about the reality of God's, of, let's say, for example, just hypothetically speaking, Jesus and the Spirit of God saying, okay, why would you want man? What is man? What do they do? Let me tell you why I'm creating man. First of all, I'm going to breathe into him, so I'm giving him my life. I'm giving him the same life that's going to go into you, Jesus, you know, thousands of years later, that same spirit. You know, yeah, you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to put you inside this man, you know, that's the thing I call man, and give him dominion over this planet. I'm going to give him dominion, which means whatever it is he wants to do and say and be over this territory, as long as it is part of the divine nature of God. In other words, as long as it is infiltrated in the create, creatorial powers that I have, as long as it is shifting and bringing me glory by, by me creating him and him creating it, then that's going to be the power. That's going to be the that's going to be the thriving mold of what this thing I call man do, it does. And so, if you think about it, man was created to dominate over the things that God created and to help create and populate. That's why we hear with Adam and with. Noah, go and populate the earth, multiply the earth. You can't multiply something unless you are a creator. I cannot multiply something unless I take a seed and create and populate more seed out of that seed. And so being a co-creator in Christ is letting you understand that God's definition of you is you are here to, uh, to uh, populate, to grow, to manifest, to um, dominion, to bring authority into the earth. If you think about it, we really wouldn't even need authority if we just dominated and created. I want you to think about that for a moment. If I if I knew the power to to be able to produce and to dominate, then I would have to be able to bring forth or create. I would have to be able to exercise my voice because I would be doing my job. My power to do would already be present. My power to do uh, of creating and to dominate over things would already be present. I wouldn't have to use my voice even because creation would understand and bow to the image and likeness that I'm made in and after to where when it sees me, it sees the Father. You see what I'm saying? And so when creation sees you, it should automatically see the Father. And you should not, back in the beginning, you should not even have to be able to speak you know, what you are, who you are. The reason why nowadays there's decreeing in our mouth, the reason why nowadays there is power in our lips to be able to uh, to speak and, and decree a thing and watch it be established is only because, like Paul told Timothy, hey, dude, here's the deal. Stir up the Spirit of God that's placed on you. Stir up the Spirit of the giftings that are placed on the inside of you that, that happened to you by the laying of hands. We would not have to stir this thing up if we just learned to be. Are you with me? When I get in churches, you know, and, and a lot of them are like, oh, they're going to stir up the Spirit of God. I'm like, that's really unnecessary. You do When you stir up the presence of God, the, what you're saying is you don't have the faith to understand and to believe the manifestation of God's presence is already there. You stirring it up is nothing more for you of, of giving yourself self-therapy, right? And consciousness to be stirred up to where you believe by faith that God is already present.
Let's just be real about it. Paul, Timothy wouldn't have to stir it up unless Timothy, you know, was had maybe a lack of faith or maybe just not really understanding that place. Now, once again, it doesn't mean when you stir up, it doesn't mean, oh, ye of little faith. It means you having to convince yourself of what is real that's already been real before you stirred it up. Hello? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. God's will is already wanting to manifest. You should have to stir up something that's already manifested in you because the Bible says the kingdom of God is already inside of you. Oh, God, stir up the kingdom. Why, why do you have to stir up the kingdom? There's no need in stirring it up. There's a lot of hocus pocus in the charismatic move because we don't believe by faith. It's already here. It's already manifested. That's why we're like, oh, I'm going to stir it up. Guys, oh, da, da, da. Well, the reason why, because you're convincing yourself. You're not convincing God. God's already saying, I've already put my spirit upon you. I've already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, you already have it. Why, why, you know, hey, you know, I could imagine God saying, but if you feel you got to stir it up to be able to convince yourself that it's already manifested, you do it. No problem. But for other people, they're already moving into present day reality. They're already moving into the, uh, the finished work of the cross. And we already know thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Doesn't mean that God's, God's saying, please pull down my kingdom to earth. Please do it. That's not what it means. What it means is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Meaning that Jesus said over and over and over again, thy, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is already within you. It's already within you. So what it means is my my manifestation or put away my dominion or my already knowing of my being, knowing that the kingdom's already in me, is just needing to consciously align with what is flowing down and out of me. But it doesn't mean that I'm having to pull it from something that it where it doesn't exist because it's already inside of me. Are you with me? So when you understand the whole dynamics of the kingdom of God, you realize the kingdom of God is already inside of you. You've already been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. So your faith to stir it up, Timothy, is only for yourself, not for God. It doesn't move or motivate God anymore to bring the kingdom to say, ah, since you're already stirring yourself up, I'll go, and out the, go ahead and pour the kingdom out and down upon you. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. The kingdom of God is already established in your heart, inside of you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Thy word is like fire shot up in my bones. Not coming, not, not coming in, but it's coming out of and, and from my bones. See, even the prophets of old understood that concept. And now we've got a church thousands of years later trying to bring something that they feel they don't have. And the prophets of old already knew that they already had it. Are you with me? So the reality of it is, is when God gives definition to man, he says, let this man have dominion. Well, don't you need to, don't you need to impart the dominion to him first, Jesus? See, here's the problem with most people. Most of you are looking for impartation, impartation. Oh, impart to me, impart to me, impart to me. Here's your greatest invitation revelation. You've already been given impartation 2,000 years ago. You've already been given impartation 2,000 years ago. And the people nowadays who want impartation, I know this because I've been around thousands of you guys for years. And if you get an impartation, then a year from now, you want another impartation. A year later, you want another impartation. i got to go to this meeting to get impartation. i got to get go to this meeting for them to stir me up. i got to go to that meeting to stir me up. Well, i got news for you. Why don't you just stay stirred up? Why don't you already remain in the presence of your dominion of your impartation from that was given to you 2,000 years ago and you won't have to be able to feel as if you're already getting this stuff over and over again. Because all you're doing, no offense folks, but all you're doing is you're, you're reinforcing your lack of faith that you've got to have something outside of you because something outside of you is greater than what is inside of you. Hello. I know Janika gets it. How many of you are getting this? Because the truth is, then that scripture will be known and void to you. The greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So I'd rather have, I don't want the lesser that's outside of me. I'd rather have the greater and stand in the shadow of the Almighty of the greatness and the greater that's already indwelled inside of me. So because I'm already relying on and leaning towards the greatness that's already inside of me, I don't have to rely on something that's lesser on the outside of me. I can reside in the shadow of the greatness that's already inside of me, right? Because God has already given me all things that pertain to life and godness. And when you understand this truth and this principle, then guess what? There's nothing in this world that can stop you. 
You don't have to go to this person, that person. And that's why we have a church that is codependent upon their pastors. And when their pastors fall, they the, the congregation freaks out and gets mad or gets upset. Oh, my salvation is questionable. Oh, my gosh, my healing is questionable now. That's because you put too much, you lean to the arm of the flesh and not lean to the arm of God. When you understand who you are and your, and your empowerment, then you lean upon the empowerment of that in which you already possess. And you don't have to be able to lean to the empowerment of the flesh of something outside of you. The church would be stronger today if we understood this reality that pastors we honor, pastors we love, pastors we receive from and we respect and honor them. However, I do not get my wholeness from them. Hello, I get my I get my uh, confirmation from them. Many of you are are looking for truth to come out of prophets. Many of you are looking for truth to come out of, of, of pastors. Many of you are looking for truth out of the apostles. The truth is, <laughs> the truth is, you're looking for truth that should already be found inside of you, and all they're doing is bringing confirmation and greater revelation to that in which you already have. If you're relying on other people to give you the source of truth, then you don't have the truth of the person inside of you. Hello? The truth is not a revelation. The truth is not a substance to say, oh, pastor, preacher, preacher, preach it. The truth is a person who should live inside of you, preaching through, preaching through your, and, and, and vibrating his truth all through your being every single day of your life, right? So here's the key thing. When you understand that reality, then everything else will be confirmations to you. Everything else will be greater revelation of that in which you've, you've already known or already, already heard because it's already bearing witness with that which is already inside of you. And that reality causes a great manifestation to take place because what goes in a man Come, will come out of a man. Many of you are many of you are switching that scripture around. Many of you are saying, "I want it to come in me from someone else to help me." But what goes in a man doesn't always mean a good thing. What goes in a man will come out of a man, right? So what that scripture is alluding towards is it re it represents more of the negative going in you that's going to come out of you. It doesn't always allude towards the fact of getting all the goodness in you to come out of you. Why? Because I already have the goodness in me. His name is Jesus. And because I already have the goodness in me, then what goes in a man should, shouldn't, you know, which shouldn't be anything outwardly except only, only confirmations. Why? Because I have a boundary of who lays hands on me. I have boundaries of those who speak into my life because I don't know where you've been and I'm and my temple is sacred so I'm able to, to, to sanctify or I'm able to protect the truth of the one named Jesus that's already living inside of me to where, what go, what, so to where with me I'm not always relying on something com, coming into me. I will now stand in a greater level of faith and, and, and watch as, as, out of my protection of what comes out of me such as great rivers of living water. Let me give you a great, great example, even from a powerful truth, a, a higher level of truth. Jesus, when we talk, when he talked to the woman at the well, he was saying, hey, look, you know, talking about himself and what's going on. He says, hey, look, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He didn't say, now, when you get established in synagogue and, or, and you know, in the church, once I die and go to the cross and you get a lot of word in you and, and, and you're able to really dive in and you're speaking in tongues, woman, and you're doing this, you're doing that, you know, then, then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's not what he says. He didn't go through all the, all, all the, the rigmen roar that we have to go that we put people through stop putting people through the ringer stop putting people through the ringer communion is very simple to take for people right the spirit of god is very simple to be able to expand on when people want to be able to receive a greater revelation on the giftings of god that have already been placed on them from centuries or, or, or eons and eons ago and when somebody does lay hands on you or when somebody does lay hands on you and you confirm with something like mary and elizabeth then something will automatically leap out of you mary and elizabeth didn't come together and say let's lay hands and and, and bring the impartation i impregnate you you impregnate me no they just knew that when they were in the company of one another, iron began to sharpen iron. When they're in the company of each other, something, we'll say the word magical and powerful happened, just being around somebody else who understands this stuff, then you automatically something will leap in you. Are you with me? Something will automatically start, le le start leaping in you. Many of you are so addicted to revelate, I mean, to impartations and laying hands on me and touching me and, oh, I got to go to this meeting because, because you don't trust what's in you. 
and you don't obviously know what is in you. The greatest revelation I've ever my life had is knowing the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for anything because the shepherd lives in me. I've already got everything I need and all I need to do now is just rub against those who understand that process and principle. Because iron sharpens iron. When I'm in a meeting, where it's a, it, in fact, it says this. You want to get deeper on me? It says, we're two more gathered in my name. Tell me in that scripture where it says, if two more gather in my name, you're speaking in tongues, you're touching each other, you're, you're, you're bringing impartations, and you're, oh, hundo, get out of your belly in Jesus' name. Come on, come. No, no, because you're trying to carry people through legalism and laws and do's and don'ts. Right. And that will turn into it will turn eventually into, oh, wow, you're anointing. Can I touch you? Wow. Let me lay hands on you because you've done it before for me. And it automatically starts getting into the arm of the flesh. And before long, psychologically, you begin to be convince yourself that when I touch that person or they touch me or I need to run to the healer to be able to get healed, which is Benny Hinn or this person or that person. Then what happens is automatically you start leaning more to the arm of the flesh and it begins to come that way. And yes, and yes, and yes. And yes, it becomes a power trip. Thank you. You took the words out of my mouth. But when you understand the process, the position of power, the knowledge of the revelation, that we're two more gathered, those are two people that know themselves and their empowerment, that when you get electricity around electricity, it doesn't have to go, oh, it just, it just is what it is. All right. When I get a magnet near metal, what happens is it I can get it close enough and it just wants to pull together. Think about that. I don't say in the name of Jesus, you pull that metal. Hallelujah. You pull that metal magnet. Come on. See, a lot of you are wasting your energy and your time when you can be standing in the presence of your beingness rather than make a bunch of hoopla. Amen. And so, and that's, and if you need to build your faith up to have that done, do it. Praise God, do it. But you, your goal should be eventually that you walk away from the need because the shepherd fulfills and satisfies your need to feel as if you need other people to give you what you don't have. Do you need other people in your life? Yes. Do the arm, can the hand say the arm have a need of you? No, it has need of it. However, it's the need of the company around each other, you know, that brings it. The day of, okay, here's a good one. I'll tell, I'll tell you where a lot of Pentecostal charismatic people miss it. The day of Pentecost. The day of, they gather in the upper room. Did it say, let me ask you an honest question. Did they say they were laying hands on each other? Did it say that they were all like bringing impartations to one another? No. Did it say they had to hold hands in order to spread the anointing upon one another? Uh, no. It was the unity. Thank you, Desiree. It was the unity of the company of the knowers. The unity of the of those with of, of the expectation. Uh, let's make up a word. The expectors. Those who are expecting. When you get around people of precious like faith and you are the expector and you are the unifier and you are the the the, the one that's whole, look, you don't have to do anything. Just being in the company of other people of precious like faith like that causes an explosion. But when you have to feel as if you've got to start hoopla and, and, and get the stuff moving and motivating and touching each other and hand up, you know, and, and just like, you know, touch me, touch you, touch me. No, when you get into that place, let me tell you something. You don't know what people are, are, go, are going through. I don't want everybody touching me. Amen. I'm a big hugger, but I'm not a bit, but I don't need everybody touching me because I am the, because you know why? I've become a knower. Not a know-it-all. <laughs> Let's get that straight. But a knower. I stand in my knower ability. Not know-it-all ability, my knower ability. When you stand in your knower ability, something tells me, Pamela, you're writing this down. Or, or, or you're going to make a meme out of this statement. But when you stand in your knower, then you realize your knower speaks the knowing in you. Hello? When I stand in my, uh, me as a knower, the knowing in me from the truth called Christ disturs up the ING, the knowing in me, and the knower 
has knowing in him that causes it to flow out of you that causes reflections on other people inspirations on other people that's why prophecy is for edification exhortation comfort prophecy is not to tell you what you need to do in your life per se according to new testament theology Woo, hello, hello, hello. Can I get a witness from the choir today? Do you need prophecies? Yes, you do. Do you need prophets? A hundred percent you do. Should you begin prophecies all the time? Yes. Why? Because they're sharpening and they're magnet to the metal to this is you. This is a prophecy. If you in your if you're the knower, then prophecy should be doing this. Get metal, get metal in your, your magnet. It just, it just pulls itself to it. And why? Confirmation. Bam. Something leaping in you. Bam. Rivers are flowing in me from what you prophesied over me, Jeremy. That's what you do. If you have to have, oh, I need the prophecy. I need the prophecy. When, when you get like this, you're proving to yourself you're leaning to the arm of the flesh and you don't know yourself and you don't know thyself and that you are incapable of trusting the truth the, the Mr. Truth called Jesus inside of you. And you're and you're validating the fact that you're clinging to something to make you whole. A magnet can just say, put me around metal. I'll do my own job. If I I should have done this, I should have brought a magnet. If I'm a magnet, and this is a magnet, and I get metal around it, if I get it just close enough, it pulls to it. Right? It doesn't have to say, oh, in the name of Jesus, I'm pulling you close to me. Your knower just pulls it. If I be lifted up, I will draw, draw people unto me. That sounds like to me a man named Jesus that knows the stuff and knows who he is. Because if I lift me up as the knower, I will just draw all people to me. Can you imagine Jesus going, oh, in the name of Jesus, I'm com in the name of myself, I'm just, I'm just commanding everybody to put, be pulled to me. No. <laughs> that sounds, that sound is nice when you smack your hands. So that's the key thing you got to think about. It's the power of unity. The power of knowing. The power of, of iron, sharpening iron, coming together and let's, and instead of doing instead of you know doing this thing of like um, you know lay hands on me no iron sharpen iron means this there's your sound for you that's iron why because a whole person of knower and as a knower and a whole person of a knower yeah that's it right there guess what happens when you if I continue to do this my figures are getting hot right now. Like, I'm not talking about something spiritual, because anything you rub together, oh, I can feel that heat. You're going to, it, it, do it right now. Do it right now. You know, you know why? Think of it this way. Let me ask you a question. I want everybody right now to do this. Do this right here, first of all. Everybody do this right now. You don't feel any heat. You don't feel any, you might feel the warmth of your fingers and touch. You don't feel any heat. You don't feel any, you don't feel anything. Okay. Now do this right here. As hard as you can. Of course, you can probably hear the dry skin, right? And all of a sudden, guess what? Why is my hand getting warm? Why is my hand getting hotter the longer I do this? Because, can't, I'm on my bike. Yeah, don't wreck, Nicole. And the reason why, because the more you do this right here, it's iron sharpening iron. What does that mean? It's two knowers that now just rub together in unity. It's not touch me, lay hands on me. Because this right here, doesn't doesn't stir up heat on my hands. Can I get any witness from the amen from the choir? And it doesn't mean this stuff we're against stuff. No, I'm not against them. I'm not totally. Not. I'm all for that. But there's a time and a place for everything. Yes, it is. It heats it up. Time and a place for everything. That's why it's vitally important. You understand the whole dynamics of your existence and your life. You were put here to manifest, to dominate. Dominate doesn't mean, I'm going to be honest with you, I do not believe in Christian nationalism. I'm, I'll put it out there. I don't believe in dominating everybody, controlling everybody, making everybody do what I tell them to do. I don't have, we don't have to, I, here's, here's my thinking. If you've got to create laws to force people to do certain things, you're doing, you're not doing no, you're not doing any grace and you're not being the church that needs to be, needs to bring forth the power of the light. 
If you've got to reinforce a law to cause people not to do certain things, then it's showing yourself to be incompetent of being the light and being so bright that you're shining out it, that you don't know how to shine in darkness. To me, it's a cop out. You want to know the truth, but it's a cop out. That's why I say no. When you get when you get yourself to be the knower, here's 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 my take on life. Here's my take on life. You want to hear my take on life? Thank you. Here's my take on life. I'm not into controlling people, so I'm not into Christian nationalism. Nor am I, and nor am I in that place where I I have to be able to have everything else bow down to how I feel and believe. Because if I knew that I'm a knower and I knew what I am and I know who I am, I could just be a light in darkness. I don't have to create a law for that not to happen. I can just be the light. So, I, so my words to you today would be this. Don't be a cop out. Take your own responsibility. Be the light. You don't want your children on drugs or have an abortion? I got news for you. Teach your children. Not the government's responsibility, nor is it to create a law against it. It's the fact you do not know how to be a good parent. I am, do not mind saying that. Train up your children the way they should go. They will not depart. You can't put responsibility in someone else's hands. You should take your own responsibility. I don't need a law to tell me what to do for my family. What I need to do is take responsibility to be the adult and be the knower. Hello? Where I can just rub against them and create the heat that I need to. To sharpen them. Can I get an amen from the choir? I know it can be a little rough around the edges, but some things I'm like, church, you're not, you're moving out of your position. You're trying to put responsibility in everybody else, and that's why you're not manifesting God's desires in your own life. That's why you're not allowing the process of victory to happen in over, and overcoming power in your life because you're too busy trying to make everybody else bow to your belief because you know your beliefs are not working for you. Hello. I'm sort of blunt about this stuff because I don't pull punches on this stuff. If you want to manifest, be the manifester. You want to manifest, you be the manifester, right? I don't allow anyone else to manifest for me. It's disrespectful to the person that I am. Hello? It's disrespectful to the person I am. I don't need somebody to, to tell my children, hey, don't have an abortion, have an abortion. Don't do drugs. No, it's my responsibility to manifest thy kingdom and come, thy will be done in their life, right? I won't get you, I won't start on politics. I'm just saying too many lazy Christians try to put on the government and 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 and, and a dictating mentality to control to, to control things of how Christianity should be. Christianity is not a governmental thing, nor is it a country thing. It is an individual thing. And when the church learns that, the church will be ablaze and we'll see revival. But we're never going to see that when we're trying to change the country into something that God never wanted to it to be, because that's Old Testament. New Testament is talking about the individualism of the heart and not the not the community of a country nobody can nobody can give me a new testament scriptures to 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 to, to go against that my point being is I rely on myself to manifest. I rely on myself to bring dominion. I rely on myself because the Holy Spirit lives in me. God has already given me divine nature. And that divine nature in me begins to birth forth and bring out what it is that is in my heart, to, uh, the desires of my heart to manifest. Amen? Sometimes I do go a little my little routes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but forgive me. But my key thing is I want to see you manifest. And the greatest thing that we've, we've been given on this kingdom, on this planet, is the power of the Holy Spirit that directs us as individuals to know ourselves and then to birth forth what it is that needs to be birthed forth. You want to see the world change? You want to see people change? Cover countries change? Then live the light out loud. Right? You can't change this. Let me just say this. Many of you are trying to change a system when the Bible says to come out from among the system. Right? So that's the key thing. Something just went crazy with my phone. So I don't know if you guys have saw this or not. My phone just went crazy. Anyway, I, hope, I don't know if you guys can still hear me on Instagram. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, and close because something on my phone just went crazy. I love you guys dearly. Have a blessed, wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon.